Welcome. I'm Ray Prather at Prather Ebner LLP here in Chicago. And I'm Dave Lutry with Lesser Lutry McGlynn and Howe of Lake Forest, Illinois. So, Dave, I hear there's a CLE on hot topics for estate planning uh, on October 10th, and you'll be presenting at it? I will, actually. My topic will be life insurance trusts. Um, great. What, what is an irrevocable life insurance trust, and how does it work? Uh, an islet or an irrevocable life insurance trust is an irrevocable trust that's created to hold the life insurance policies of the grantor. And the basic function of these trusts is to get the death benefit of those life insurance policies out of the taxable estate of the grantor. Um, so what changes have occurred in the last year that will impact islets? Well, a number of things have happened. I think one of the most interesting things that I've seen is the advent of decanting in Illinois. Uh, as of January 1st, 2013, we have a new section of the Trust and Trustees Act that allows for trustee decanting of irre irrevocable trust. And really what that is is the trustee creating a new trust and depositing the assets from the old trust into the new trust. Okay, great. And h how exactly does decanting work? Right. It's Decanting is uh, a power that is derived from a trustee's discretion. Uh, so that if a trustee has a significant amount of discretion in administering a trust, uh, that discretion may be able to be used to create a brand new trust and deposit the proceeds from one trust into the other. And in creating a new trust, the trustee likely has the ability to modify substantial provisions of the document. And for those of us who are representing clients that have old islets that really aren't achieving their primary objective anymore, this is a way for us to revive those trusts. And uh, how can we learn more about this? Well, as, I, as you mentioned earlier, I'll be speaking about this at the uh, Hot Topics Seminar on October 10th, 2013 for the ISBA. And in fact, I understand that you're going to be talking about something at that seminar. Yes, I will be presenting on estate planning for same-sex couples. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Great. Well, what, just uh, what is the current law actually on same-sex couples in Illinois? So currently in Illinois, uh, civil, uh, same-sex couples are allowed to enter into civil unions. Um, and civil unions are a legal relationship that provide all of the benefits and obligations of marriage, but don't actually have the name marriage attached to it. Uh, so for couples who married out of state and then moved to Illinois, uh, they also are uh, recognized as civil unions. Great. And how is uh, DOMA and the Illinois Supreme Court decision concerning Proposition 8, how is that affecting this area of law? So on June 26, 2013, the Supreme Court uh, issued two decisions related to same-sex couples. Uh, the first is Proposition 8, uh, the Proposition 8 case, where the Supreme Court was supposed to address whether or not marriage is a fundamental right for same-sex couples. The Supreme Court actually sidestepped that issue and uh, issued, uh, in, dismissed the case on grounds of standing, which created an, a situation where California has to recognize marriage between same-sex couples, but the rest of the states don't. Um, the other case is uh, United States v. Windsor. And in that case, the Supreme Court struck down Section 3 of the Defense of Marriage Act, which says that the federal government only recognizes marriages between different sex couples. Um, Great. Okay. Well, like many estate planning practitioners, I have some clients who are same-sex couples. Is there something I should know when representing them now? So uh, I guess first, it's unclear as to what impact the DOMA decision is going to have on couples in Illinois. Uh, so the Supreme Court seemed to have some differences between marriages and uh, s things that are not quite marriage. Um, so we're still waiting to see how that's going to work. My advice to planners is to uh, plan for the law as it currently is today, and um, but build in contingencies for the future because things might be happening soon. Great. And if, if we all want to learn more about that, you said you'll be speaking at the seminar. Can you give us the details of that seminar? Sure. It's October 10th. It will be presented as a live seminar and a webinar, and uh, it can be obtained on the FAST CLE archives after the seminar is complete. Great. Thanks.